going, everybody? It is episode 77 here on Hawaii Football Now. Jordan Helly, Hunter Hughes back with you for our latest edition here of HFN. We record this 7.10 a.m. Hawaii time on Wednesday, February 15th. Happy Valentine's Day, belatedly, uh, to everybody out there. Hope uh, you were able to uh, spend it however you so choose. Uh, yesterday, we're set to release this, as usual, on our Thursday release date. Tomorrow, that'll be February 16th. Uh, a big mahalo to our sponsors, Spectrum Mobile and Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union as well. All right, so uh, let's just dive right into our opening drive, and it'll probably be an extended one. Uh, and we wanted to uh, to take our take our time here. Terrible news yesterday on Valentine's Day. Uh, learned of the passing of former University of Hawaii head coach Greg McMacken, um, who passed away in um, on the mainland. Uh, had had spent uh, majority of his time uh, in the Dakotas, uh, Texas, Las Vegas, kind of enjoying retirement, enjoying being a grandpa, uh, which I think anybody who got to know him during his time at the University of Hawaii, a couple of stints as the defensive coordinator, obviously, then turning into the head coaching position after the departure of June Jones uh, between the 2007 and 2008 seasons. Uh, the dude w- loved his family, was a huge family man, and uh, you've been hearing I think the outpouring of love and aloha for him uh, from a lot of his former players, a lot of his former colleagues uh, here over the last, you know, it hasn't even been 24 hours uh, since we got that news yesterday uh, about the passing of Coach Mack. Just uh, I think anybody you talked to just talked about how kind and generous he was um, before they even got to the football stuff. And the, the football resume is quite impressive. And we'll, we'll get hit it to it here in a second but uh kind of just hearing some of the personal stories from his players and and uh he was a guy that uh it it seemed like guys like players really liked playing for you know and yeah. he got the best out of his players um and getting the opportunity to be a division one head coach you know i think some people <laughs> will look back on that era um maybe a bit more fondly than some did in the, in, in the moment uh, back then uh, after he, you know, was basically um, let go after his fourth season um, and agreed to retire at that point, I believe is how it officially was termed, but uh, it's, it's been really nice to see uh, how much uh, his players look back on, on him fondly. Uh, and I think says a lot about the man. Yeah, it's not just his former players. It's the coaches that he groomed. Um, You know, you look at the guys that have come through that in one way or another were affected and mentored by him in in some way. It's uh, it's pretty amazing. And uh, the... The interesting thing about University of Hawaii, Jordan, even today, whenever you go down, a lot of the support staff and, you know, facilities, um, employees have been there for four or five coaching regimes at this point. And they all, you know, you could ask them about, hey, what was it like, you know, in June back, you know, in the Sugar Bowl years or, you know, the the McMack uh, era and, just about all of them from my experience as a player and now um, as an alumni, everyone had nothing but great things to say about Mac. He, he treated you with kindness, um, uh, treated you with uh, respect and was just a, a good hearted, sweet man, you know? Um, And it, it almost uh, gives you the feeling like he fit Hawaii. He, he fit for uh, what this place um, calls for in their head coach and what uh, you kind of have to rise to the occasion and uh, and and become if you're going to be our head guy. So, yeah, it's uh, definitely a loss for the greater Hawaii family. Yeah, I, I think that's um, really telling. In it. And I think if you want to learn a lot about uh, – a guy and and some of these guys in positions of power go talk to the support staff right uh, yes. I, I think that's that's a really really um telltale as to what kind of person um some of these guys are and and coach mac uh, i think universally pretty well loved pretty well loved uh because i think he reciprocated that uh, in, in a lot of ways and 
you know, hey, was he without his flaws? No, right? Remember some of the incidents when he was a head coach and, and maybe just kind of, you know, saying the wrong thing uh, at, at certain points. Uh, and, and you know, to his credit, he owned up to a lot of that. Um, and, and it was never uh, anything malicious or anything like that, I think, during his time because it was an incredible tenure at the University of Hawaii. His career is pretty darn remarkable uh, when you look at it. Um, but especially his time at the University of Hawaii, right? He was the defensive coordinator in 1999 during that incredible turnaround season. Um, he was a defensive coordinator in 2007 uh, during the magical, right, uh, Sugar Bowl run. Um, and, and you look back at some of those teams, and, and obviously the offense and the run and shoot and the quarterbacks and June Jones are probably going to come to mind first. But I think fans of those eras – really remember those defenses, right? It, it wasn't like Hawaii was just outscoring everybody 73 to 70 or something like that um, during that era in total, but it, especially in those two seasons, um, he was a guy who kind of carried on and, and reinstilled and, and at times brought back, you know, that, uh, that physical, hard-hitting Hawaii defense that that local fans love and adore yeah. right and uh you know coaching guys like Jeff Ulbrich on that on that 1999 team uh some of the some of the the terrific players of that 2007 era uh and exactly. then on into his his head coaching tenure uh basically that five-year stretch right the second time he came back to the University of Hawaii and and I think you know I forget at times that 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 ninety nine stint. It was just one year before he he left to go take the Texas Tech defensive coordinator job and kind of worked his way back up again. He spent time in the NFL coaching, um, was the defensive coordinator of the Seahawks, and we can get into some of that other stuff. But yeah, at the University of Hawaii, those those were some some fun some fun defenses, uh, and and ultimately, he's the last guy to win a conference championship at the University of Hawaii in 10, 2010. It's been a long time. It's been 13 years. Uh, and he's the last guy to do it. It's hard to do. Um, 29 and 26, I think, was his overall record. Averaged over seven wins a year. Obviously buoyed a little bit by that 10-win WAC championship season in 2010. Uh, he won a lot of football games. And I think as we've learned since his departure, um, it's hard to win football games here. Uh, and we, I think, took that for granted in a lot of ways. He had three seasons that were right about 500. Uh, the final year of his head coaching run at the university, it was six and seven. Boy, I think a lot of people, <laughs> there were some years after that, that six and seven looked pretty darn good. Um, and as you pointed out, I think the 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 wins, the, that defensive legacy, um, the 2010 WAC championship, and then also the the fact that look he he kept the run and shoot going he was a defensive guy who didn't try to come in and completely revamp things uh he went out and and kind of found in a way Nick Rolovich and Dave Aranda as yeah, as his coordinators exactly. after it wasn't his first year right he brought those guys on as position coaches then elevated them in his second year and so his second third and fourth years that's when you know that's that's identifying talent as well, not just not just in recruits, but those two guys who obviously Dave Rand is now at Baylor uh, and, and Rolo made his way to Washington State. I mean, he found two power five head coaches. Um, that's right. You know, and, and those guys were coordinating both sides of the football and doing a pretty darn good job at a pretty young age. Um, and that was the kind of guy Mac was, you know, he he was very open to to the run and shoot. And I think you've seen some of those praises. I know Rolo has has offered up some comments and. And uh, some of the other guys uh, associated with him and Dave Aranda has had glowing things to say about Coach Mack. Had actually spent a little bit of time with him at Texas Tech as well as a grad assistant. But some of those things are, are I think, the the memories that come to mind uh, in, first for me when when thinking about Coach Mack's legacy. Yeah, it's he in some ways. Um... I, I gotta I gotta imagine, you know, was the last little glitter of the glory years of University of Hawaii, of what I would probably term the modern University of Hawaii uh glory years. You know, obviously we have uh the early nineties with uh 
the the veer and the option uh that uh th- that that magical i think it was the 92 team jordan um but then it really it really was um you know he he had a he had a part to play in what uh coach jones um did for us back in in 2007 and then whenever he went on to kind of greener pastures mcmack kind of kept some of that nucleus together and you're exactly right uh, the, the promoting of guys like aranda and and rollo um got to remember rollo at the time it was only about 7 8 years after graduating college that uh coach mack is basically promoting him to offensive coordinator that's that's a big responsibility at a at a very young age and uh even as a player under rollo that had nothing but amazing things to say for a guy that really kind of gave him his shot and yeah and then talking with guys like uh brant moniz and um greg salas guys that just have nothing but Great things to say about them. We're going to try to get one of those guys on uh, next week's show um, for you guys, just to get a little bit more uh, stories and inside um, perspective on uh, the late, great uh, coach McMacken. But uh, yeah, this is, um, this is one of those things that you, you hate to see and you, you hope anytime someone leaves uh, Hawaii that they feel loved and cherished for the time that they, uh, spent here and poured into this place and this community and these players um because uh he's part of uh part of our history for sure yeah and and you know uh passing away at the age of 77 uh was a football lifer um other than the hawaii head coaching job was a head coach at oregon tech um for four years uh in the late 80s but he had a, a number of Assistant coaching stops collegiately, uh, a stint to the U.S., the old USFL of the 80s. Um, and then after that Oregon Tech uh, stint in the 90s, the dude was the defensive coordinator at Utah for a couple of years, uh, Navy, and then launched on with Dennis Erickson and was the head coach at Miami, like the U, <laughs> for a couple of years, like coaching Ray Lewis and, and Warren Sapp. Uh, and I believe Dwayne Johnson, like the Rock. I'm pretty sure was uh, on those uh, Miami teams as well. Then he went with Erickson uh, to the Seahawks, was uh, a defensive coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks for three years um, before they got let go. And, and, you know, fortunately for Hawaii, that meant him coming to join June staff in, in 1999. Like that was his, that was the nineties for him. That's, that's pretty darn high level. Like that's, that's, you know, Dennis Erickson's Miami teams. That was kind of the yeah. tail end of that first era of, of the U, but boy, that was, those were some ridiculous teams. And then obviously the NFL experience, he went to Texas tech after that terrific Hawaii year uh, parlayed that. Uh, then he went to uh, be the, the San Francisco 49ers uh, linebacker coach for a few years before coming back to Hawaii, ultimately where he finished up his coaching career. Um, just, just a, a terrific, terrific run. Right. And, and Mac being basically affiliated with all of Hawaii's, conference championships of you know the last what is it now it's been 25 years yeah <laughs> coach mac was was part of all of them, you know whether as defensive coordinator or as head coach and, and i think you know a, a guy who i think had a little bit more football to give uh at the time of his departure and, and obviously hindsight being 2020 and and um just those were some fun teams. He was, it, it, he's got some incredible stories from his time. We mentioned at all of these different stops, but uh, he was right in the center, right in the middle of some of the more memorable Hawaii teams. I think some of the more fun Hawaii teams that we've ever had uh, on the football field, uh, just really enjoyable to watch. Um, and I think how well he handled taking over for the guy. Right. You never want to follow the guy in June Jones yeah. for for however it ended uh, during his stint at the University of Hawaii to take over following the 2007 season uh, and really that run. Right. That run from 06, 05, 06, 07, that 06 team was ridiculous. And I know Mac wasn't part of that. 
Um, but to to take over the program after that, uh, with the departure of the architect in June Jones, uh, half of the coaching staff, right? Some of those guys stayed, obviously, with Coach Mack, uh, Rich Miano, the Lee brothers, probably most predominant uh, prominently. Uh, but the other half of the staff went with you to SMU, and so for Coach McMackin to take over after that, that was a, not an enviable task. Uh, and for him to do it with this humility, for him to do it with, you know, the the way he carried himself and to to have that team go to a bowl game the very next year after all of the departures, right, to take that team. And I know that it didn't go well against Notre Dame in the bowl game, but to finish seven and seven, um, he goes six and seven the next year. All right. A little disappointing. Uh, then goes ten and four. Was it, I believe, uh, to to win the WAC championship? Uh, another, you know, lackluster bowl appearance uh, against Tulsa <laughs> that year, but but just an incredible run. That was, you know, grand. Kaepernick at Nevada, and and Boise was number two in the country at one point that season. Um, that was one of the crazier years of college football. But for 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 them to win the the conference, a share of the conference championship in, in that season, just a few years removed, and. And then he goes six and seven and, and loses, I think, four or five to end the 2011 season. I don't know how many people expected that to like be the end. <laughs> Boy, we had higher standards back then. Um, you know, but to do that after June, like immediately after June, like the pressure of that, the expectations yeah. of of hey, look, we're we're BCS program, right? And 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 I and I get it. They they didn't necessarily come close to playing in a BCS game again. Uh, but boy, that's that's pretty darn good to be the the bridge pressure. guy. That's a, that's a lot of pressure, and he handled that about as well as I think anybody could have. Um, and 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 again, to your point, in Hawaii didn't choose to go in this direction, but he had kind of laid the foundation for that program to keep going. You know, with the assistant coaches that he had, and and I know, you know, not necessarily to Norm Charles' fault. Norm Chow's fault. He gets hired. He wants to bring in his own staff. I get that. Um, but he had he he left the program in a in a pretty darn good place. Uh, and I think he deserves a lot of credit for that in, in how he went about it and 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 where he kind of left things and, and what he accomplished on the field. And, um, you know, the, uh, that's kind of how I wanted to end my comment on it. Obviously, Hunter, you can you can pick it up wherever you want after this. But but that's that's kind of how I remember Coach Mack and, and just hearing the stories. Never really got to interact with him person, but hearing the stories of people who did and knowing guys who played and coached with him. Um, they got they got a lot of really good things to say about Coach Mack and. And uh, I just want to wanted to leave it at that where, look, he had a really tough proposition and I think he had it pretty darn well. Yeah. You know, and kind of in that same vein of things, Jordan, we, we forget that the June Jones era issued in a brand new logo and a brand new look and feel to the brand that we all know and experience now as university of Hawaii with that H Um what came with that was a new, a new look, a new feeling, a new kind of mantra to uh, what type of a school and what type of a team we were wanting to be in this modern era. And then, you know, obviously we all know it came with it uh, some of the most successful years in the program's history. And you're exactly right. You know, for, you to be the next coach after June and try to keep that monster uh, well-oiled and running and make it look like that wasn't a mistake, that we could still be successful um, and kind of kept that nucleus together in a way. And uh, I mean, I'll just, I'll, I'll bring us down memory lane just for a second, you know, Coach Mack, after he was let go, that started this cycle of new head coach every four years. Yeah. Yeah. And we haven't had a longer tenured coach since Coach Mack. Rolo, Rolo did four years, right? And and he and he and Mack can basically been the the longest tenured, nor nor made it into year four, but but didn't quite last that fourth season. And, and we're we're really hoping and praying and believing that Timmy could be the break to that mold. Um so that we can try to piece together a few successful seasons again, because, um, uh, you know, as we saw, uh, we didn't know at the time, but 
we decided to let coach Matt go and we, we slid. So, um, it's, uh, it, I agree. I think the guy probably, if he would have been honest, would, would have said I, that he still had a little more football uh, left in him at the time of his departure. Um, and uh, it's just, it's one of those things you, you can't help but wonder, you know, what, what could have, what could have went down uh, had, had he uh, been allowed to stay or something like that. And, uh, but um, at the same time, it's, uh, I'm thankful for the years that that he was here and and with us and i'm sure that's that feeling is shared by a multitude of hawaii fans as well yeah well said well said and and our best to the mcmackin family um i think we share uh the sentiments of a lot of people in hawaii they'll remember coach mac very very fondly um not just for his on the field uh contributions but but off the field as well very really kind and, and generous man who was right in the middle of some of the more memorable Hawaii football seasons and teams, um, you know, of the last quarter century. So uh, our aloha to Coach Mack and his family. We'll take a quick pause and then uh, dive into the game time here. All right. Uh, game time here on Episode 77 of Hawaii Football Now. A reminder that Hawaii Football Now is brought to you by Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union. And it's Hawaii's largest credit union. They are committed to serving individuals and businesses through its 14 branch locations statewide and convenient digital banking services as a leader in providing support for the islands. Hawaii USA is committed to strengthening Hawaii's financial wellness and sharing successes with members, local businesses, and the greater community. Visit HawaiiUSAFCU.com. All right. Uh, saying aloha as well to Aloha Stadium. I, I, I just wanted to kind of put this out there for folks, Hunter, and spend a little time on this. Uh, but Aloha Stadium is putting on an event on Saturday, February 25th. That's next week, Saturday. Uh, from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, and it's they're calling it Aloha from Aloha Stadium uh, closing activities, right? As we all know, um, the stadium is is no more. They are it's going by the wayside. They, they're still figuring out exactly what uh, the, the footprint is going to look like uh, when they decide whatever the heck. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be a new stadium. Uh, they're on the Halava footprint. Uh, it, it's a pretty cool thing. They're they're uh, Tours available, uh, viewing of the Hawaii Sports Hall of Fame, which kind of exists down in the bowels of Aloha Stadium. Uh, they're underneath the the bleachers and whatnot. Uh, the old Queen Street Stadium Museum will have some stuff set up down there. A lot of old memorabilia uh, from the past, uh, you know, nearly 50 years of existence of Aloha Stadium. <clears throat> So at last check, I, I think the free admission, which was the basically the early window, the first hour and a half that is sold out is wait list only. But from 12 to 4 p.m., you can get in for seven bucks uh, free to kids 12 and under from five to nine p.m. You can get in for 10 bucks per person free for kids 12 and a pretty good deal because they got a lot of stuff set up. Um, times are available in blocks. Uh, the tour and everything kind of takes an hour and a half to two hours for you to make your way through everything. Um, they have things set up down on the field they've got an entertainment stage photo booth uh kiki art zone uh they got uh sponsor tents all kinds of different type of deals uh barefoot league's going to be running some some field activities like drills uh for kids i assume but you know maybe not maybe you can jump in, in with, with the kiki out there uh barefoot league they always do some good stuff uh you can try and kick a field goal um if you if you want to maybe tempt fate and, and make sure you got your hamstrings stretched out um ESPN Honolulu is going to be part of it uh down there as well with some of the personalities they've got uh some art down there uh and then uh some some entertainment uh as we mentioned on the stage we mentioned ESPN Honolulu uh coach Timmy Chang members of the Hawaii football team are going to be down there as well from 6 to 6 30 uh as part of a partnership with Barefoot League they've got uh, the Pro City High School Band from just up the road uh performing out there as well uh, and then uh, some speeches from some some VIPs. <clears throat> I don't know if they've announced exactly who's who's going to be speaking there. That's later in the evening, as well as some live music. Um, they've got Duncan Kamakana, uh, Hui Pu, Frank DeLima is going to make an appearance, Sean Na'al, uh, some good stuff. They'll have food, drinks, uh, and some, some retail options uh, available. We mentioned as well the, some of that memorabilia via Old Queen Street Stadium Museum, which would be pretty darn cool. Uh, so again, um, you know, they've got, they've got all kinds of really cool stuff. I, I know they've got 
uh, from the University of Hawaii and beyond, right? Obviously, so many different teams called Aloha Stadium home beyond, you know, the University of Hawaii, whether it's some of the high school stuff, whether it's the Hawaiians of the old World Football League, whether it's, uh, you know, the the Hawaii team in the old North American Soccer League, whether it's the Hawaii Islanders, um, you know, the the old uh, Hawaii Winter Baseball League of the 90s. Like, there are so many... Uh, you know, the concerts that took place in there, the the the, the rallies, all kinds of stuff, uh, the, the history there. Uh, so wanted to to kind of put that on everybody's radar if it has already hasn't been. Uh, I think this will be pretty cool. This will be pretty cool and a chance for people to say, you know, aloha to the stadium, a, a chance to check out some of the memorabilia, relive some of the, the, the awesome memories uh, and, and so much of Hawaii football history resides there so much of just Hawaii sports history resides there and and beyond that as we mentioned when it comes to the entertainment aspect of the venue yeah you know I don't know if many folks were afforded the opportunity um that that us as players sometimes were with uh seeing sections of the stadium so Mm -hmm. um whenever you exit the stadium through the players locker room you have to walk up this ramp and the last, you know, I don't know, 50 yards uh, before you officially exit the stadium to a uh, crowd of uh, kids asking for your gloves, which I'm like, I don't have any gloves. I was a quarterback, but uh, that, <laughs> that was always that was always part of the uh, end of the game festivities that that last 50 yards inside of the stadium was kind of this Hall of Fame of everyone and every play, you know, every team that of significance, I should say that had played in Aloha stadium. I mean, um, Michael Jackson, yeah, uh, the, uh, Whitney Houston, um, the Eagles, um, it it was one of those things that kind of made you you know stand aback and be like wow this place is a historic venue and even you know for for me coming from the mainland like we uh i knew what aloha stadium was it, it was usually the the home of the pro bowl um you you couldn't help but wonder whoa that 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 place is really cool and for uh for us on the mainland any anything branded with you know Hawaii and Aloha is just cool um now living here and experiencing that and um my experience of working hard to remain on the football team and earning the right to run out of that tunnel at at one point um i have a lot of deep and fond memories of uh of that rust bowl <laughs> that uh we all even though it wasn't perfect we claimed it and called it our own and now living in and uh being a, a sports fan out here I, I see how integral that stadium was to uh high school sports too and 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 the uh, um how many guys played at Aloha Stadium, even at the high school level, that was kind of the venue for big time high school matchups. Uh, Jordan, did you ever get a chance to play in there? Yeah, I played, I played in there uh, three times uh, at Aloha Stadium uh, when I was in high school, we lost all three of them. Uh, But it that was the, that was the Mecca, right? Like that, that is, it's, it's Friday night lights walking into the, into the, uh, the Astrodome uh it, it's it's Hoosiers walking into Hinkle Field House like that's that's that was the goal right that was the dream like to play on that turf to play in that stadium the just how big it was uh when you were a kid right that's that's where it, I don't know how I forgot the Pro Bowl I'm glad you mentioned the Pro Bowl uh that's that's where the Pro Bowl was every year that's where the University of Hawaii played that's where Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and John Elway they'd play the you know the Pro Bowl. That's where that's where Colt Brennan was. That's 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 where that's where Timmy Chang played. Like that's that's everything that you could have ever wanted if you were a, a kid growing up in Hawaii playing football. Like that was be, be that was like just incredibly there. awesome. Um, Sorry, what was that? I was just saying we we beat BYU in that place. You know? Uh, yeah, yeah. 
Multiple Stutzman, times. Yeah, Stutzman ran through the end zone and punted it into the stands. Uh, a highlight he liked to show us uh, repeatedly uh, when we were uh, his quarterbacks. But, uh, yeah, and, you know, even the locker rooms uh, have – been widely uh kind of covered as being grungy and uh kind of how do i how do i put this mildly because we love aloha stadium uh sub tier let's just put it that way um that uh sometimes we're we're dripping on you some foreign substance through the metal and the concrete above you but uh it was almost as if you were in hollowed ground of yeah it's it's not it's not uh world renowned facilities but it is aloha stadium like you're in it you're you're in the the guts of this place that's kind of what the locker room felt like and uh yeah i'm i'm definitely going to miss uh that place and it'll be interesting to see whenever the new one is created whatever that one ends up being um you know created as if they aren't able to honor some uh, some of the you know aesthetics and and things that made the original Aloha Stadium special, because it really was, as you put, an iconic, um, almost Everest of of a venue here in Hawaii. Yeah, and I think even beyond, right? It's, as you mentioned, um, people across the world, Aloha Stadium very very recognizable like the name itself right aloha stadium um and and hosted just so many uh you mentioned the concerts you, you know the pro bowl just think of how many hall of famers played on that field uh pele played on that field with the cosmos like back in the 70s uh you know bringing bringing soccer here and uh, the hula bowl for a number of years the the polynesian bowl here in recent years you know maybe maybe uh some of those kids are going to go on to Hall of Fame careers, definitely a lot of NFLers that uh, were part of the early Polynesian Bulls uh, played at Aloha Stadium before it had to move. So, yeah, there, it's just so many, so many iconic memories, um, you know, obviously for the University of Hawaii, you mentioned the the 2002 BYU win, the the first couple of breakthroughs right there, uh, turn of the decade, right on into the 90s, uh, the, the Hawaii Bowl win. That's kind of the last, was that the last game with fans? uh for for university wow. of hawaii there yeah, in 2019 20 yeah the 2019 hawaii bowl right yeah when um, uh, yeah cole mcdonald uh had that had that huge performance and yeah and, yeah nick marner right that's right uh somebody tattooing zach wilson trying to dive over the goal line Love it. uh, that's right and he fumbled <laughs> yeah you know, so that just so many, so many memories. Uh, the BYU ones usually come first to mind for a lot of Hawaii yes. fans, so I, I think they'll appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, so if if you want to check this out, uh, please go ahead and do so. I encourage you. Obviously, there's some tickets for sale still available. Uh, aloha dash stadium dot eventbrite dot com, or you can just go to the Aloha Stadium website and everything is there. Uh, and they've got the Eventbrite link as well to purchase some tickets. Uh, seems pretty reasonable. Seven bucks uh, before four o'clock, uh, after five o'clock. 10 bucks, you know, and, and they got all this entertainment and, and the memorabilia and the memories. Uh, you can run into some of our ESPN Honolulu colleagues down there as well. That'll be pretty cool stuff. Um, so we'll uh, we'll maybe get some reports from folks that, that head down there. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it, unfortunately. Um, I was actually kind of trying to figure out a way to, to, to find my way down there. But uh, I think some conflicts might uh, keep me out of that one on the 25th. So we'll, we'll see if we get some some folks down there. All right, uh, we'll go ahead, take our halftime break here and uh, come back, talk a little spring ball uh, as we are midway through the second week already uh, as Hawaii works their way through spring practices, uh, culminating March 3rd, uh, which ain't that far off uh, as we hit the midpoint of February here. All right, more HFN coming your way. This is Hawaii Football Now from ESPN Honolulu. All right, second half time here. Jordan Hunter back with you. Episode 77, Hawaii Football Now. Uh, we talked a little bit about some of the spring camp updates. Uh, I don't think any surprises up to this point. Uh, obviously, we know what the offensive objective is. We talked a bit about that the last couple of weeks. Defensively, working in some new faces. 
Uh, Jacob Euro, I think, is pretty excited about some of the pieces that he has. Uh, but uh, here over the last week or so, Hunter, uh, anything else kind of catch your mind as we get some updates from down at practice besides the rain, uh, which has been here and uh, based on the reports, will continue to be here through the weekend. That's right. And I think that's actually to our advantage. The The more reps and uh, practice we can get in that Manoa mist, it's a little heavier than mist right now. I I uh, got dumped on yesterday at practice, but uh, that is, as you and I found out, Jordan, on the sideline at multiple times this past season, going to be a part of playing on that uh, on that venue. And uh, we got to get used to playing all aspects of the game in those elements and use it to our advantage. Um, Timmy incorporated some ball security um, segments of practice yesterday. Uh, the coaches were out there hitting them with stuff and uh, all things that it's not just a, a time waster at practice. Like that is ultimately what, it comes down to for us in mountain West football games is taking care of the football. So I was, I was uh, glad to see that being made a point of emphasis, even at this early point of the year in February, because uh, we got to take care of the football next year. Um, but uh, you know, one of the things in the run and shoot that those of us that played quarterback under that system, the first thing we look at are the, um, the quarterback's feet because so much um, of the timing and coordination with the receivers and the routes that are out there is uh, is synced up with the QB's feet in their eyes. So I, I love what I see from, from Shager. Um, Timmy has taken um, a completely different approach to how he runs practice uh, just him personally uh, is with the quarterbacks every single uh, period. Um, sometimes whenever, uh, you know, like the ball security thing, Timmy goes over and, and spends time with the defense and checks in with Yoro. But uh, I love seeing that as uh, a former quarterback. I wished that Rolo spent more time with our position group because he played in the run and shoot. Um, he's going to have so much more, understanding and so much um more nuances and uh jargon and you know inside baseball uh and knowledge that he can part you know pour into these guys with and timmy is really um taking that role and responsibility um on himself to pour into those guys and uh you're you're seeing it right now it, it's still early in spring where we're not getting full on contact um 11 on 11 on passing periods they're really wanting to take care of each other and uh high emphasis on injury prevention right now and so a little more seven on seven routes on air uh low contact periods to drill in these routes uh, so you don't quite get a feeling on what it's going to look like uh, in a real life uh, game environment, but uh, the 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 bones are starting to be um, curated to see what this building is really going to look like. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of the way you got to do it, right? Uh, and bring this thing along, and they've they've got a very very concrete plan as to how they want to implement and and keep these guys fresh as well. Uh, has anybody else kind of jumped out at you? Uh, we obviously talked about a bunch of different guys last week, but has uh, has anybody new jumped out at you, or anything else you've kind of seen uh, from that standpoint uh, that's that's maybe um, you know kind of catching people's eye? Yeah, I think uh, Nick Senecal, um, mm. one of our our outside receivers, is going to develop into one of our 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 dependable outside receivers. He's just smooth, uh, electric. Uh, I don't use that word lightly. Uh, he's got bounce, Jordan. Whenever you know he can go up and get a football, similar to John or Sua. Whenever John was out jumping up and catching. Uh, fade routes from drew brown back in the day um another guy that i'm actually interested to see what he can do for us is steven fiso uh wide receiver who 
has kind of battled some injury um, last couple of years and uh, hasn't quite gotten a lot of time on the field for us, um, but uh, was brought in kind of that last, uh, I can't remember if he came in as a, a gray shirt with Rolos last year or if he was um, if he was uh, a freshman with the Graham era, but uh, he's been here for a while. And so along with uh, Pinoke, who's uh, kind of on the IR right now, uh, going through some injury stuff, we're going to look to those guys for some leadership in this wide receiver crew um, in this first year in the run and shoot. Yeah, he was, he was here his first year in 2019, Stephen Fiso. Uh, and then Nick Seneca, of course, uh, the Canadian, right? Six three, right. I think a lot of people were excited about him. Kind of joined very late in the uh, last season, right before I believe the start of the season. So, just getting him acclimated. Still, um, he was a guy that that came in kind of under the radar, but uh, folks around the program were like, hey, you gotta, you gotta watch out for this this new guy from Canada. Uh, and, and Senegal maybe you know, maybe hearkening back to some Nick Martin memories uh, if they can get another uh, big time target out of Canada. Uh, all right. Uh, a Hunter, we really appreciate the, uh, the updates from camp. Uh, hopefully things are a little drier. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll cross our fingers. Maybe the next couple of mornings uh, they're on lower campus. Uh, speaking of pass catchers, uh, we got to send a congratulations to Marcus camp. Absolutely. Once again, a super bowl champion, the chiefs defeating the Eagles. What an exciting super bowl that was this past Sunday. Uh, and Marcus Kemp, he's got he's got two rings. Was activated like the day before the Super Bowl. Special teams dynamo. Uh, big old eighty five was leading the way on the longest punt return in Super Bowl history. Kadarius Tony nearly housing it. Uh, set up uh, one another one of the Chiefs scores right. The uh, Kansas City just incredible in the second half. Uh, three touchdowns and a field goal on their four possessions. Marcus Kemp, special teams eighty five all over the place. Man, good for him. Uh, and joins a list that is not very long of multiple time Super Bowl winners uh, that played football at the University of Hawaii. And and this is great. This is absolutely incredible for the conference, for the team. Uh, you saw the Mountain West tweeting out congratulations to Marcus. You saw obviously everybody associated with the University of Hawaii. But uh, it is never bad publicity when one of your guys goes ahead and wins the Super Bowl because not a whole lot of guys winning the Super Bowl at the end of the season. Uh, and one of those guys in the 53 man. Uh, active roster for the Chiefs in the Super Bowl happened to be a former Rainbow Warrior. Like that's that's pretty darn cool, man. Yes, the anytime the Chiefs are running special teams, I am scanning the field for eighty-five. Uh, it's one of those cool things where it's it's like your brother. You know, you're you're wanting to see where your brother's at on on TV, and you know magic back in the AFC championship where he actually got to be incorporated into the passing attack and Mahomes hit him with a pass. Um, we mm -hmm. all know what he's capable as a receiver. I mean, mm -hmm. one of, one of our, our greats of the last 10 years, for sure. Um, he's, he's on that list. Um, but that punt return, man, uh, he was step in step with, uh, with the ball carrier all the way down to the five yard line. And he, he ran over a dude. It was awesome. Uh, on that, that one block, I think the guy might've gotten tripped up a little bit, but uh, Kemp ran through him and almost ultimately sprung a double block at the end to, uh, to get the touchdown. It was, uh, that, that was super, super cool to anytime you see, someone you know at the the highest stage there is uh it it is special and not only with the second uh super bowl win but i'm sure he he got a handsome bonus for a super bowl win as well so uh nothing but um just i i'm i'm just happy for my friend and uh my teammate it it really is good stuff for the University of Hawaii. I hope they use that in whatever way they can to continue to promote the program. I know his name is on the wall inside of our uh, of our locker room of of people that have made it to the NFL, and I'm sure Timmy and those guys uh, used him as an example. 
like they always do in film of, hey, like, and they'll laser a guy for, for them to focus on or uh, zero in on because it was picture perfect fundamentals on uh, on special teams. It, it's definitely something for guys at UH to aspire to. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's that's what you can promote, right? You come to the University of Hawaii, man, we, we've got Super Bowl champions. And, and they do, and I think the list is longer than maybe people would guess. Maybe you go through the exercise and you're like, yeah. But, you know, Hawaii's now got uh, six guys with multiple Super Bowl rings. Obviously, Jesse Sapolu, right, the four with the 49ers. And, and thankfully, his son Roman, now uh, offensive yeah. line coach, co-offensive coordinator for the University of Hawaii. Uh, Mark Tuinay's three. With the Cowboys, uh, you got Maatan Uvasa and Jason Elam right on those 97, 98 Broncos teams that won back-to-back rings. They've got two. Uh, Adrian Clem's got two from his time with the Patriots, uh, the offensive lineman. Actually, now, once again, back with the Patriots, I believe, is the offensive line coach leaving the University of Oregon. And uh, Larry Cole back in the 70s with the Cowboys winning a couple of Super Bowls as well on that defensive line. You also got six other players with one title. So you got like 12 former players have got won Super Bowls uh, and six of them now uh, have won multiple uh, seven now actually with Marcus uh, have won multiple uh, six prior uh, and he's only uh, two away from from catching Jesse so that's something to aspire to uh, oh. for Marcus and I tell you what if he keeps uh, hanging around Patrick Mahomes that's he, exactly uh, right. he might have a few more in the cards uh, I, I, I think that that may be something going forward but that that's a pretty darn cool list to join and shows you the 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 quality that that this program has produced over the years uh Sapolu and Tuine and Tanuvasa and Elam and Larry Cole Clem right some names that are just etched in Hawaii lore there's Marcus Kemp he's got a pair totally you know just for a little like fun context for those of us that were a part of that Norm Chow era and I know we mentioned that earlier with you know talking about coach Mack and things like that we really wondered if we were ever going to get a chance to compete for a ring, uh, whether that be a bowl ring, uh, you know, certainly not a conference championship. And Kemp was on that 2016 Hawaii bowl team with Nick Rolovich, where that was our first bowl win in 10 years. And at the time we were elated, elated at the fact that, we got a ring. And so it's just funny that Kemp uh, not only got a Hawaii bowl, but now has two of the biggest rings of them all. So uh, man, it's, it, it is pretty cool. Yeah. I, I, that's, that's some chicken skin type stuff uh, for Marcus. I uh, also wanted to give credit to Rob DeMello, Kate who had compiled uh, those stats. That's where I got uh, the numbers from on the uh, university of Hawaii multiple time. Super Bowl champions. That is that's quite the club. That's a pretty darn cool club that, that Marcus now is a part of. All right, that'll kind of do it for us uh, as we head into our uh, quick little two minute drill. Uh, head our overtime on out of here. I just want to give a shout out. Uh, talk to one of our guys, Jackson and Kahului, the other morning. Uh, said he's a big fan of the podcast. Uh, so mahalo to all the listeners out there. Uh, we thank you very much. Got a couple of comments. Uh, our guy Fred on YouTube. Uh, we talked a little about Aaron Rodgers last week. He said uh, Aaron Rodgers is being a weirdo. Oh. <laughs> which I feel like is is fair. Uh, and then our guy Al from VA asked about uh, Eddie Ose Kitia, Eon, as he calls him, E-O-N, uh, not being on the spring practice roster. I think he's just not enrolled yet. Uh, so that's that's the thing. And not all of the guys in the recruit class, right, are going to be able to get there uh, as spring enrollees. Uh, and so we'll, we'll, we'll see a lot more of the names that we talked about throughout the recruiting process join this program throughout the summer on into the fall as these guys get into school and, and they get that all figured out. And I'd imagine for international players such as Ose Kitia, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different process as well uh, to get those guys in and uh, as part of the active roster. So then it'll come in time. It'll come in time, even though uh, I think a lot of people are excited to see him, especially with his speed out there. So that'll be a little time coming, but uh, yeah, shout out to all you guys out there. Appreciate the listeners, the commenters, everybody uh, feel free to drop us a line. Feel free to let us know your favorite Aloha stadium memory. And if maybe you're planning to go to the event next week, Saturday, any final thoughts here, Hunter, before we wrap it up? Yeah. Uh, I'd love to know, Jordan, uh, do you think Rogers is ending up as a Raider or do you think he's ending up as a jet or staying with the Packers? 
seems like the betting favorite is New York with the Jets. Um, but like, does he want to go? He's a California guy. Does he want to go further from home? Does he want to play in the cold? Or does he want to like play in Vegas with his buddy? I feel like I kind of lean towards kind of lean towards the Raiders. I, I think I am too. I, I think with with Devontae there in terms of yards and production, Josh Jacobs had more yards than anybody this last year. They are poised uh, to be in a winning position. The only thing is they're in the same conference as the Chiefs. So you're going to have to get by those guys. Um, the Raiders, uh, I think, are the most obvious landing spot for him. But uh, as our uh, as our friend Fred uh, so adequately put, he's a, he's a strange bird. So we'll, we'll see. Being what a he weirdo, ends. man. Stop being a weirdo, Rogers. Light yeah. is okay. Maybe just dim the lights, you know, maybe infrared. That seems to be the, the rage now. Uh, maybe you don't have to go complete darkness and have your mind play tricks on you. Um, hopefully it comes out of it sane. That's uh, yeah. that's all we hope. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, that'll do it for us. Uh, big thanks as well to our sponsors, Spectrum Mobile and Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union. I got Jonathan on the controls, as always. Uh, and again, a big aloha to Coach McMackin's family uh, as uh, we all share <clears throat> in uh, the well wishes and the prayers uh, as we mourn the loss. Uh, former University of Hawaii head football coach Greg McMacken uh, passing away earlier this week. Uh, for Hunter, I'm Jordan. We'll see you next week on episode 78. More Hawaii football now. We'll see you next week, everybody. Aloha. You've been listening to Hawaii Football Now with Jordan Helley and Hunter Hughes, all from ESPN Honolulu.